Um, I was just going to ask Michael to start the recording. So <laughs> he's on top of things. Terrific. Um, thank you for um, taking the time to attend Conference 101, the ins and outs of attending a professional conference. I am Patty Collins. I am a consultant for the Central Kansas Library System, and we are located in Great Bend, Kansas. I'm Patty's co-presenter. My name is Gail Santi, and I am in the middle of Kansas. I am the director of the Central Kansas Library System. So just a couple housekeeping details. Um, at Central Kansas Library System, we uh, want our Zoom meetings to be comfortable and useful to you all. I mean, it doesn't bother us. As, it doesn't doesn't bother us if you interrupt us. Uh, if you have a question, you can speak out or raise your hand, and we'll acknowledge you and answer your questions. And uh, we will have this um, session um, all recorded and on our Seek Hillis YouTube channel, and I'll put that in the chat as well. Lisa T, do you have a question for us? Patty, you're muted. Are you sure? <laughs> I was talking. <laughs> I could hear me. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and bring up a slide presentation. I think. It always takes a second. And you always have to talk yourself through it. And I have 14 slide presentations available to me today because I'm oh, working on conference. Please pick the right one because they don't need to see that other one today. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't want to we don't want to let it go yet. Okay. I have a question before you even get to sharing, since there's so many okay. of us. If this will be your first time at conference, can you raise your hand? You can raise your hand and wave it in the air, or you can raise up your virtual hand. Um Oh, nice, nice, nice. Wowzer. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Oh, I love it. And Excellent. so for some of you, is if you've attended state conference, but this is your first national conference. This oh, is wonderful. wonderful. Oh, Super. I'm so excited for you all. We, uh, we plan to bring the magic to Kansas and that only works if you're all here. Okay, let's start sharing, share, start here and slide share. There we go. Okay. How to get there and how to get around. No. So one of the big, one of the big things about um, conference is you figured out that you had to register early and you had to make conference hotel reservations early. This doesn't just apply to your state conference, but certainly for a national conference as we lose, there's only so many hotel rooms. And I've heard from the ARSL conference committee that 850 people are expected to be at this conference. Um, and then there's some things about travel if um, that is a Wichita only, if you're going to RSL, um, expect to wherever you go to plan to pay to park your car. So if you are driving um, and if you're driving, if you use the Hyatt for um, valet, it's $16 a day. You may park in the garage, but you will need your conference hotel key to get out of the garage because that's how they prove that you're really you. Yes. If you enjoy being social, there are other activities associated with conference like diner rounds, but you need to let someone know if you need transportation. Let's go back. Um, don't don't go forward yet. Not just yet. Um, one of the things that I learned early in my um, conferencing career, and I was in Philadelphia, and I am a very smiley and friendly person, um, some kindly older gentleman said, young lady, you can't be smiling at everyone you know everyone like you know them and and I said well I kind of can't help that and he said well at least don't wear your name tag so we don't know what your name is so yes wear your name your conference badge when you're in the conference you could probably wear it in the conference hotel 
but get in the habit of as soon as you step out of the conference hotel to take your name bag off and tuck it in your bag. Some people will also bring a different bag, not a branded conference bag, um, as another form of safety and security. We have a question in chat. It says, KLA usually has free parking way out south. Is that going to be the same for ARSL? I hope so. I believe that sections of the Century 2 parking lot are still under construction, and that's where we have had that opportunity in the past. I would call the Hyatt to confirm um, that you have available free parking, as when I was there a couple of months ago, um, every space was either metered or restricted. And do the meters take credit cards, or is it all just coins still? It was still coins when I was there two months ago. What I thought. Okay, let's continue. I think you can keep the slideshow up even if I start chatting. You don't need to show them my face. Here, get a good look. <laughs> and you're muted again. What keeps happening over there? Hmm. I'm on two screens. Oh, okay. Um, it does say pack your smile in your business cards, but Gail has already talked to you about being in a city. Um, you will want to take notes. So you'll want to be whatever that device is or notepad or whatever you need to bring for you. And uh, Gail had already mentioned the book bag, but the water bottle and snacks, that's a big one. You don't realize how long it is to get through a session um, or how long the line is when you decide to go to Starbucks or even to get a drink of water in the hallway. Right. At, at, at the Hyatt in Wichita, there is a Starbucks on site, but they have very limited hours and enormous lines. And they are not open at five in the morning or at five at night when the rest of us need coffee still. Bring your business cards or address labels. Um, if you don't have fancy business cards, you don't need them. Address label stuck on a sticky note will work. Um, basically, that's your opportunity to connect with someone new. And there's also a vendor hall, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. But um, there's opportunities to enter drawings. And sometimes you just want, you want to give your name to a speaker because they're going to send out special handouts that might be a part of a session that you might get because you were there, mm -hmm. not things that are going to be uploaded because they may be things that um, are a little more special or personal. Um, and then the last one I think is the most important thing off this list. And I learned this from Gail. Pack something comfy that makes you feel like home. Peopling is very hard. Gail has something that she calls her whoopee <laughs> that she brings that she brings with her to every conference. Um, and Gail um, goes off often to because peopling is hard for her. She goes off into her room to take a nap and she wraps herself up in her whoopee and she feels like she's at home. So it's important to um, know that you're away, but make yourself um, comfortable and away from home. Patty, would you share the screen again, please? The slides for everyone. They're not up. No. No, they're all just looking at how pretty you are with your new haircut. She got a conference haircut, so. I got my that. conference haircut. Stare. Are you there? Oh, Nathan said, I just called the Hyatt. He put the phone number in chat. And yes, we are, Patty. The big South lot is owned by the city and it is still free. Thank you, Nathan. Awesome. Excellent. Yes, I bring a blanket. Some people bring um, a pillow. Just whatever you need to be comfortable in your downtime to be you. Most of you are also going to pack books, but there's that, you know. So what to wear? You don't have to be fancy at a library conference, and that's any library conference. You have to be comfortable. <laughs> Um, your your day is going to look different because you'll be sitting in a chair where most of you are busy and up and around and helping people all day long. And so that sitting, you need to be comfortable in what you're sitting in. So jeans and t-shirts are okay, but for some people, that's a suit and a tie. And you don't have to look at somebody else and go, I'm I'm overdressed or underdressed. Right. That's not right. a problem. The most feel important, like yourself. 
the most important thing is you are going to do a lot of walking on hard cement floors that are covered with a thin layer of carpet and your feet will hurt. You'll also have some stairs. There is one elevator that we can use to get up and down into the conference rooms, but the stairs are always faster. Um, lots of walking. The elevators at the Hyatt are very, very slow. So if you think you're gonna run and take a break in your room um, and get to a session, you're probably gonna have to leave the last five minutes of that prior session to get to your room and back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if um, if presenters are trying to get to the second floor, uh, and they have as much stuff as Diane and I usually carry. You're you're not gonna you're not gonna make your session on time. Right, um, right. Um, dress in layers. I'm usually presenting at conference, and when you're up front, first off, you're nervous. And if you're anything like me, when I get nervous, I get hot and then I get sweaty. So I'm burning up. But I have friends who bring blankets with them to conference or um, a nice uh, fleece blanket or even a, a warm quilt because they're always freezing no matter how many sweaters they wear and they're sitting still. You be you and you be comfortable. Um, some people like to jazz up their conference bag with library pins or stickers. Some conferences have conference ribbons where it says first timer, or um, intellectual freedom fighter is one of my favorites. I, I'm a children's librarian, lots and lots of things. Be sure and look for those when you uh, go to the registration booth and pick up your badge or bring your bling with you from home. This is usually the biggest question is what is Hoover? Whova is the conference app that many um, library conferences are currently using. The last three or four that Gail and I have attended have all used the same app. A couple of things, the app is only open for a limited time following the event. And so many of the session documents and slides that are available, as well as the online content for the Virtual attendees mm -hmm. is only open for a very short period of time. In the past, ARSL has had it for 60 days, but there has been talk of that only being open for 30. Because so, it comes with a greater expense, right? Correct. And so when you're in a session, if you've liked that session, that night, you may want to um, send yourself an email or however you do a reminder that when you get back to the library, you want to go download those documents so that you can preserve them. Or you want to make sure that you get that person's contact. One of the things I do is I'll take pictures of that a lot because those don't disappear out of anything except my phone. Um, you can, the nav, the, the, um, the Whova app is kind of, intuitive. If you think about an old conference booklet, they're arranged by days and then by hours. And you can go through and you can actually say, oh, I want to attend that session. And if you're, um, oh, thinking you can be in more than one place at one time, Whova will say, oh, you've already got something marked there. But I recommend that you always have a backup. And we'll get to that in just a little bit, but Whova can also tell you where the restrooms are, where the conference rooms are, so you know which room is my meeting in, which room is my session in, and where am I supposed to join up with people to eat lunch. That one you usually can tell. Um, but it also gives you the contact information for all the other attendees, and it gives you contact information for the vendors as well. There's lots of good stuff in there. There's games to play through the app and things of that nature, but just because there's so much there, don't feel pressured to do that. Um, yeah, I have gone in and played with the Whova app for ARSL just to get some of those things moving. So if someone sees me and says, how did you do that? I'm ready to help mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you, if you have a question, um, look for somebody that's already using it and say, can you show me how to? Because you're all librarians. We're all librarians. We're we're there and we're we're able to help. But if this is new technology to you, guess what? It was new to all of us because five years ago it didn't exist. Um, oh, I I thought of something and then I forgot it, but that's okay. And 
uh, one of the, the, the second bullet on there is follow the app for breaking news yes. from the conference committee or association. It may be they've wrote, they've changed your room number, just like on a flight, you got moved. Um, so that may be it. Um, it could be that they've canceled an activity and they want you to know that to how to get your money back. Um, something of that nature, or that they've, um, Aerosol usually does a prize at the end of, uh, does a prize drawing at the end of their conference. And if you're not there, you don't get there. Uh, you don't get the chance to earn the prize. So uh, make sure you follow that because some of those things, they don't list until we're there because they push very hard at the beginning of every session to use the app. Well, and one of the other things to remember, one last thing about Whova is that, um, your presenters are normal people and librarians just like you and they can get sick and some sessions sometimes might have to get canceled and you don't want to be in there waiting and waiting and waiting when you could be elsewhere. This is one of my favorite parts about conference. To me, it's like, um, and I'll age myself, the Sears Christmas wish list where we would open it up and we would say, oh, we want this and that and this and that and this and that. And of course, you know, we'd get our, you know, four things, but there are so many sessions this year and so many of them look wonderful. How in the world do we decide what to do? You're gonna look through the app or you can go online and see the program schedule and make note of the ones you think that you have to go through. If you're having trouble with your board and somebody's doing a session on working through problems with the board, maybe that's one you have to go through. Um, we're doing one on getting the culture you want, but that's that's neither here it's nor there. It's not a commercial. Yeah, not a commercial, neither here nor there. If you have a culture at your library that you're not happy with, then you would mark that one and that's way you know what you would want to go to that. In your app, select the ones that you want. Don't worry if you have three in the same hour. Don't worry about that. Um, if you get to your first one and it's not exactly what you wanted, leave, go to your next one. Don't be afraid to walk out. No one's feelings are going to be hurt, first off. Um, their feelings aren't gonna be hurt. They want you to be where you need to be. And that will be up to you to determine. I would say, be brave and go to one session that doesn't apply to your job. If you're a library director, unfortunately, it all kind of does to apply. And what I would say then is go to one that looks like it's going to be fun for you. I um, attended a session on um, laughter therapy once, and it was one of the best sessions I ever attended. And I absolutely had the most marvelous time. And it has really made a big difference in my career. It had nothing to do with my actual job at the time. Be willing to put yourself out there. If the presenter is asking you to ask questions, if you have them, please do. Or if they're asking you to share experiences, because that makes the session more useful to both the speaker and your other attendees. And then listen and learn. You might not have been in a session with somebody, but they told they were talking to somebody else about such and such session they attended and say, hey, I want to learn more about that. You know, and that might be an opportunity to swap a business card or, oh, you have to go to this person because they always do a great job. And so sometimes that you'll learn from conversations you either overhear or with other people in the hallways or at meals. And then. Uh, remember that those documents and slides are available in the app following. Uh, the vendor hall also has, um, the vendors also have a part of the app where they do commercials for new products and services. And we're going to talk about the vendor hall in just a moment, but uh, making that a part of your full conference experience is, is important as well. Not just for the vendor breaks, which often have snacks and chocolate and coffee, thank goodness. Um, After coffee. Yes. Spark talks are really exciting. They are um, zippy and speedy and they race from one topic to another. But um, maybe you found somebody who was talking about something that might be good for some sort of um, staff training for you. Visit with them and say, oh, is this something you could flesh out? Would you be willing to do this for us on Zoom? One of the very, very best things about your presenters at ARSL is they are librarians just like you, and they love to share. 
the conference hall at ARSL is not too overwhelming compared to the Public Library Association or to the American Library Association conference. It's downright small. To me, it feels manageable. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot. It As a conference grows, the vendor hall grows. Vendors pay a pretty high price to rent a booth. And that's one of the ways that the association um, makes some money off of conference. Uh, I don't know. Yes, it is on there. I was going to say the most important thing to me about vendor halls is right there. I see it. Okay, go ahead, Patty. <laughs> um, before I go on, uh, Liz, do we have a comment or question in the chat? Are we good? We're good. We're okay. good so far. Okay. So um, a couple of places down, it says galley copies are sometimes available. What a galley copy is, is a book that is not finished yet. It might not have its cover on it. It might have uh, proofreader marks in it or not, not be edited at all. So those items that are given to you because they can't sell galley copies or ARCs um, are given to you, but please check your collection development policy. We here at CKLS, because we have a consortial catalog, say that you cannot add those to the collection because they are not in their final published state. So um, that is one thing to learn because when stuff's given to you for free, there might be a reason why. And then that's followed with author signings are really popular. They have very long lines, so expect to miss a session mm -hmm. and be prepared to pay for the books because... I made that mistake the first time because nobody told me that I would be, be expected to pull a $20 bill out of my wallet. Luckily, you had one. Luckily, if I had you're one. you're shopping for something bigger for your library, like um, an outdoor book drop or um, even bigger than that, new chairs, new furniture, new children's furniture, check that vendor pricing. Go look at their websites and find out what their prices are. Vendors often offer a special conference discount that can be pretty darn significant, and that could end up saving you quite a lot of money. Um, we've purchased a lot of different things through the vendor discounts at conference. I have a question, ladies. Yes. You mentioned having to have business cards or address labels with your information on them. Why would you need those? Well, because you're proud of it. It's the first time in almost 16 years that you've had good business cards. We're proud of them. Um, it's networking primarily. In the vendor halls nowadays, you don't need to usually turn in an address label or your phone, your uh, business card, because the vendors have drawings all the time for free stuff they're giving away. And it's awesome stuff. Um, nowadays, often they just scan the QR code on your uh, name tag. I would, before I forget, wear your name tag high on your chest. Don't wear it hanging off of your waistband down by your pants, or otherwise you're going to see all of us staring at your crotch trying to learn what your name is. That's a little bit uncomfortable for me, and so it's it's one of the things I always say, wear it up high on your chest. Um, I get a sore neck very easily, and so I actually have a special loop, a cloth loop that I wear that my neck doesn't get sore. But Liz, does that answer your question? The free stuff. Yes, it does, ma'am. But also because for me, as as a as a consulting director, yes, Nathan, a lot comfortable. Um, for me as a consulting director, I'm often answering a lot of questions and visiting with people in the hallway. And if they give me their business card or contact information. Um, or I give them mine, that means that we can continue that important conversation after conference and we've stayed in touch with one another. By wearing your name tag in the conference hall, if you are a customer of some of the vendor representatives that are there, they may recognize your name and um, there may be a special freebie because you're actually a customer. And those are special gifts that are only for current customers. Um, and sometimes they're a special gift for becoming a first time customer. And those things often happen at um, a conference and they're able to give those discounts and opportunities that they're not able to do through the traditional website or catalog. Yep. There's usually an the e evening um, snack break 
a late afternoon snack break at the vendor hall. And if you're a light eater, that often can serve as your supper. And so you save yourself that cost. Or maybe you spend it on drinks. I'm not sure. Um, but that's a tip as well. And thank the the you're thanking the sponsors of the conference, which are generally vendors, by attending the breaks and visiting the conference hall, because that's where the majority of the money, because it's more money than comes in from all of us attending, because there's, you know, five and $10,000 sponsors to get their name on the, on the slides that they do in, during mm -hmm. keynote presentations, or they sponsor an entire meal for everybody that's coming. Um, so there's several thousands of dollars. So that's a way that you thank them is by visiting their booths and, um, and then that comes with every time they scan your name or they take your name, you're going to end up with emails. You're probably already getting them if you're attending ARSL. Um, and so those email lists are going to inundate your um, inbox for weeks. Make a habit of coming home and starting to unsubscribe things that you'll never use because you'll be absolutely covered up. If you stay in this way by Christmas, you'll just have more than... More, the, more emails than I have, which is a challenge. Patty, can I talk about the icky factor? Go back to the vendor hall. Can I talk about oh. the icky factor? Oh. So I um, am a very uh, extroverted introvert, and I don't really like talking to strangers. Um, you are not strangers to me. You are library people. I have no stranger in library land. Um, when I first started going to conference, going to the vendor hall, felt like I was going to a used car salesman's gauntlet where I had to walk up and down the aisles. They're not like that. They're really kind people. They understand if you say, no, thank you, I'm not interested. Um, but if you use a certain library vendor, say Ingram and their app there, stop and say hello to them. Give them some feedback because they will take that feedback back home with them and well, the information that you shared might make a difference in how they do business in the future. There you go. I messed you up. Sorry. That's okay. It does have a little bit of a key factor, but um, it's being in that being in that space. And, and I have to say, I've worked with book guys my whole career. And back in those days, they're the only place that you met them was either visits to your library or in person at a conference. And, and we have to remember, they're just making a living too. Yes. And so it does sometimes feel like the used car salesman, but they're good guys and they almost always have chocolate. <laughs> That's right. That's not their intent. Um, and I learned that that, and I got over it. And now I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I like to talk to them. We have a comment in chat from Sandy Wilkerson. She says she picks one day a week to unsubscribe after conferences. Good idea, Sandy. That's what you're such, you're so good at time management. Very good. Okay. Total. I think, don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Well, we this really is are. This city but... smarts idea. Yes. Um, the reason that we're including this is because we care about you. We may just be meeting you for the first time now, but we love librarians. And one of the most important parts of our job is the care and feeding of librarians. And um, we want you to be smart and we want you to be safe. Now, if you're a man, you may be thinking, oh, none of this is going to apply to me. But you are going to a big city with big city problems. And yes, all of these do apply for you. Be aware of your surroundings. Don't walk alone after dark. That means if you're a smoker and you're stepping out to have a smoke, stay within the lights. Don't wander off. You're not right near a riverfront and it is a lovely place to walk, but don't walk alone. Um, don't wear your conference badge outside of the conference center. You can tuck it into your pocket or into your bag or into your purse. Use public transportation wisely. Go in groups of at least two. Um, let others know where you will be when you are traveling. Let people know I made it home. I got to the restaurant fine. I'm back in my hotel. Um, that's important. It is. Don't leave your belongings unattended, even though you're in a library conference um, and it's mostly librarians. 
it's not a ticketed event and there's not someone there taking your ticket to get in. The public can enter. Um, there are lots of awesome things about going to conference in a big city and it is there's shopping and there's restaurants, there's all kinds of things. Um, and there's shopping actually pretty close, not just downtown, but within cars right away. Tip for good service. That should be part of your overall conference expense. The Hyatt does have a shuttle and that is a free shuttle. But I find, Patty and I, that when we have to leave at five o'clock in the morning for our shuttle ride to the airport, if it's going to be the same shuttle driver that we've had all week and we've been tipping all week, they show up early and they're happy to see us in the morning. They... Um, don't be afraid to get to know them. They live in your town. They're going to have good recommendations on dinner or a really cool feature in your town that in their town that they think that is important for you to see. And it's this isn't meant to scare anyone, but this is the Association for Rural and Small Libraries. And at least in central Kansas, our smallest library has is a town of 69 people. And, you know, and, and so in Kansas, you have to go to the city to go to the doctor, and that might be a city of, of 7,000 people, or it might be a city of a million people, depending on what kind of doctor you need to see. But um, ex expect those things like, you know, paying to park the car. I was sent off to Topeka to a conference when I didn't know any better, and I wasn't planning to have the cash in my pocket for... Um, the parking meters, things like that. I nobody ever told me. So mm -hmm. there were things that that I learned along the way. So uh, um, take care of yourself and each other. Um, if you're staying outside of the Hyatt, because many people are at the other downtown hotels, reach out on the Whova app and say, "Who's staying at the Broadmoor? I'd like somebody to walk with um, mm -hmm. home from conference at night." And then you'll find out that you've got somebody to have maybe have breakfast together or meet up for coffee and walk together to the conference hall in the morning. And you never know, you might end up with a lifelong friend. One of the things that we've started doing um, for, for a conference now, when no matter where we go, is the first thing we do is look to see where's our nearest convenience store or where's our nearest drugstore and where is our nearest convenient care? Because I'll tell you, there is nothing worse than getting sick at conference. You're just miserable. You're not among your own things. You don't have your favorite cup or your blankie or whatever it is, you're miserable. And knowing that you can go to um, have or send somebody to fetch meds for you, um, that's important. One of the things we do right away is get bottles of water and we get snacks if we are leaving state and going somewhere else, we do that. And that way we know we've got stuff for ourselves just in case. Other stuff that nobody ever told me. And I didn't have a Gale to guide me through these things 30 years ago when I started. So I didn't know about carrying my own water bottle. And I also didn't know how tired I'd be at the end of the day. Each and every I'm never, day. I'm never afraid to ask someone, but... We all have that fear of looking dumb and somebody looking at you going, well, why don't you just know this? And so um, we are librarians, so um, we don't we don't point, we show and we take. Um, and so it might be a matter of, hey, open up your app and and let me help you show show you how I got there. Or, hey, I'm headed to that hallway anyway. You can walk with me. And again, you might find a lifelong friend. Uh, last week, I was on the ARSL um, solo happy hour, and um, I they they asked for my expertise on what would I say would be the one thing I encourage you to do, and and that's number three on this list. Mm -hmm. Connect with at least two new people each day. You might have the safety of going with people that you know, and I would encourage you to try to sit with a new person at a table at lunchtime. Or it's breaking yourselves up and going to two different sessions so you get the most out of your library's money. But we did talk about swapping business cards and Gail shared that it's so important when you get home, I might come home with name tags in my in my uh, conference badge and I'm like, who, who was that? But I was smart enough to make, take a note and I flip it over and go, oh, I was supposed to send that to them. 
or many of the time about? I've had to send out an email and say, I've got your business card and I don't know why. Can you remind me? It works. It works. Um, at really large conferences and maybe even at ARSL this year, we'll see there'll be two or three or four librarians from the same library and they huddle together like little geese and they follow the one person and they always stay together. And I always think to myself, oh, how much they're missing. They could be splitting up and going to different sessions and then they could come back with the other people they work with and they could share what they did and where they went and what a more robust and dynamic conference going experience that is. So I would say that at your state level or even your regional level, if this is you, if you've got buddies who are going, set a time after conference where you can all sit down and say, oh, I attended the best session. It was this and this and the presenter was from here and I think I really made a connection with them or I learned about the most exciting thing because you know what? Somebody else is going to say, oh man, I really wanted to go to that session, but I went to this one. Set up that networking opportunity for yourself before you go. And that way then you're more likely to carry through with it. Um, it was um, our Miss Diane bought there. Um, the first time she went to a national conference, she had a marvelous time. Um, I learned that things such as adult milkshakes exist, which was marvelous also. Um, but we were on on a bus on our way back and she was sitting next to me. I saw her and she just looked really bummed. And, and I said, so what's up? And she said, I learned so many wonderful things. What I don't have time. I can't do any of these things. And so the advice that I gave to her is what I'm going to share with you right now. If you're open 10 hours a week, pick one thing. Okay, you're going to do one thing. After conference, you're going to share with your board a big list of all the things you learned and all the things you're excited about. And as a group with your board, come to a consensus about the top five that would be the most important or most impactful to your library. So you've just taken three days worth and you've made it into five. Then you decide together which one thing are we going to work on this whole year. You're going to work on that one thing and you're going to be successful. Then you've also got, actually, you've got a five-year plan made right there. Next year, you say, which one thing are we going to work on now? And you go from there. And that's going to be really, really beneficial to your board they're going to realize the value of sending you to conference is that you come back excited and with new ideas and you end up saving the library money because at ARSL, you're going to learn how to do it the easy way, the cheap way, um, the way that other small libraries do it. And it's a way that you can do it as well. So come back with all kinds of ideas, but work with your board and say, I listened to that damn Gail Santee, you know how she is. And she said, we need to pick five things and then we need to narrow it down to one. And that's going to set you up for instant success. And I'll tell you, I would, I've recommended it to Diane, to Diane because she worked very few hours in her library. I've recommended it to larger libraries as well, because we're both pulled in so many different directions. One thing, set yourself up for success. Oh, Janae, I think that's how you pronounce it. How darling you are. Patty, she says, we're both so awesome. I wish I had this the first conference I went to. And if I'm saying your name right, then Janae, you share that with somebody else. And that's all the thanks we need. <laughs> Go ahead, Patty. The, the idea of being able to attend conference is kind of a once in a lifetime for a lot of people. And Gail gave you an example of how maybe you only get to go to the one that's in the Midwest or the Northeast, depending on where you live. You get to go once every five or seven years. But if you take advantage of what you learned, you truly can make magic for that period of time until the next opportunity to go. When uh, we were in um, Salt Lake City for ARSL, um, my colleagues were both unwell and we had traveled early to the conference. And I said, 
I'm going to go find something to do. Well, the conference location was rather remote and there was no place um, safe for me to walk. And so I said, I'm going to the conference hall. And I went in and I walked in and I said, I'm here for three hours. What do you have for me to do? And that became the beginning of a lifelong friendship with many people associated with ARSL and got me into wonderful volunteering experiences. That's the best way to learn about how the association works. And it gives you an idea of what contributions that you can make. My goal 30 years ago when I started this was one day to be a conference speaker. It took me a long time to get there. It took me a rejection to get there, but I was encouraged to try again. And now when the conference committees are calling us saying, what do you present? And I'm like, okay, this is, this is great. Um, maybe you're only ready to present a five minute spark, spark talk. That's how you start. Or you say, I want to do this, but I don't want to do it alone. Find some co-presenters or a mm -hmm. panel to be upon. Um, Consider joining the board, running for a board position on a on your local association or a grand um, national or regional. Right. Join a committee. Mm -hmm. That's how you move your way into being a part of a, a stronger part of the association. And ARSL, PLA, ALA, they all have things that you can do that don't cost any money to learn more about the association. Patty, I would add to that. What you just talked about, um, being active in, in an organization, is one of the big things that I consider moving from just a job to a profession. You may think, I don't have a degree. I might not even have a college degree. You know what? It doesn't matter. If you are working in a library, you are a librarian. You are an awesome librarian. You are probably the only librarian in your town and you are amazing. You have a profession. That profession has a set of ethics and um, you're awesome. You're awesome. I hope that you go to conference and you ask lots of questions. Um, you get emboldened and you think that's a program that we do at my library, but we do it differently. And then next year you put in a conference proposal. Oh, how awesome that will be. That is a way to grow yourself from just having a job into being part of this amazing, amazing profession. I want to point out the photograph this was we are so Alan dorky and we know it i have to tell you we know Alan we're dorky I, uh, 13 days before the world shut down for the um, pandemic mm -hmm. um you can see um we're very excited to be there um we were obviously in the conference hall we're both wearing our name tags um you can see we are not dressed up i'm dressed up like patty i dress that way every day dorky skirt tennis shoes matchy matchy Always have always have a cardigan on um, and you can see Gail is in her comfortable clothes in order for Gail to attend conference. She's got to be in her comfortable clothes. So this is okay. And if you look in the background, you can see people in, in skirts and dresses Boots and, and heels even, <laughs> um, but that's not us. Um, so there are um, being you is, is a big part of it. Have to say, um, one of the most important things that I unfortunately forgot on the slides is please provide feedback for the sessions you attend. As a speaker, we need to know if we're, we're giving you anything you need, and that includes today. <laughs> but we also, um, the, the association needs to know that they're providing information that's the right direction for you. Because if they keep calling back the same two people that get a lot of people in the room, but are they truly learning anything? They have to make a better decision yeah. and, you know, take part of the keynote sessions. There's sometimes authors or sometimes entertainment at some of those keynotes, but it's a way to kind of rally the whole association and the conference rooms are big <laughs> for those things. And for, and for meals, I mean, you're going to, the table behind you is going to have already eaten and you haven't gotten your meal yet. Just be patient. They're all coming. 
Yep. One of the things I wanted to talk about was meals as well. If you're coming by yourself and you don't know anybody who's going to be at conference. Now, of course, you'll know Patty and I, and there'll be Diane and Liz and some of the other faces that you can see here. You can look for us and say hello. But when you go into the meal room and they're enormous, they're enormous. Um, Patty said, sit with somebody you don't know. But if you've got a bunch of introverts sitting at a table, you're all looking at each other and everybody is uncomfortable. Um, I started practicing and I have a handful of questions that I ask. I, I talk up a little bit louder and I introduce myself. I say my name, my library affiliation, the size of my community by population, because that instantly people know. I'll often say we have a Walmart and at McDonald's, we are so blessed because most of you might not. Um, I talk about my job and what I do. And I talk about two more things. I talk about what I love and what I have trouble with. Those conversations are just going to really get the whole, those questions are going to get the whole conversation flowing at your table. If someone new comes in and sits down and you're all talking to each other, all you have to do is say, hey, Liz, um, you're new to our table. None of us really know each other. Here I am. Here's my name. Here are my five things. What about you? And you would share with yourself as well, because you know what's going to happen? Inevitably, more than one person at that table is going to have the same struggle or the same joy. Your community is going to be about the same size. You may talk about how long you've been in your profession or how long you've been at your current library. Um, don't forget, talk about books you love. Um, talk about best the best library program I had this year was lots of great ideas there. Boy, this was a flop. And I don't know why. Has anybody ever tried this and have you had success? It's not cheating to have a three by five card with your questions already written down. It's not cheating. It's kind of like giving a speech the first few times. But after that, what you've done is you've broken the ice and everyone is comfortable because you all realize what you've got in common. And that makes it really comfortable. One of the other things I do, and Patty always teases me, but it's so successful, is I call the wait staff by name. Sometimes they have name tags on, and if they don't, I ask them. And I inevitably, they're from a foreign country. I may or may not recognize their accent, and I ask them a little bit about themselves, and we get amazing service in the conference hall. If we want more water, we've got water. If we need cream for our coffee, we get it before other people even get dessert. Um, Saying thank you to the folks that are cleaning up the restrooms oh, goes yes. a long way. They yes. most, most of the time, nobody even notices they're there. But every time you go to the restroom, there are paper towels and there's toilet paper and there's soap. And so mm -hmm. taking a moment to say thank you is so important. An important note about the restrooms before we close up is that if you wait to go to restrooms during the breaks, there's going to be a long wait. Um, sometimes cutting out a little bit early is the way to go. When you get to Wichita, walk the hall and learn where your closest restrooms are. There are three or four, but you don't want to have to be going back to your room every time or you're going to miss almost everything. Um, if you see us at conference, you can say hello to us. We love all of you. And we're so, so excited that you're going to have a conference experience that you're never going to forget in a very positive, positive way. Uh, if you're a hugger, um, I'm I'm always open for a hug. Yep. Um, do, do remember that, um, like your state, um, Kansas is back in... Um, <laughs> COVID redo number, I don't know what number we're in. Um, so if you are a little leery, uh, bring along or wear a mask. Mm -hmm. and no one anymore is going to look at you and go, mm -hmm. my gosh, she's got the plague because now everybody has a mask nearby. Um, so especially if you're flying or something, so you can have a good conference experience. Um, last year's ARSL, Gail and I um, and our colleague uh, got cut short because our colleague did come down with COVID. Um, our presentation was over, which was great, but our trip home was 
um, extraordinary uh, because we had to get a COVID positive person back from uh, Tennessee. So um, if you get into that situation and you're not sure what to do, um, we've been through this once. Give one of us a call, um, reach out to us through the app, or if you ask at ARSL desk, someone's going to know who we are. We That's promise. Right. And, and we'll, we'll help you get the, the logistics worked out and, uh, and, and provide some support there because you just don't know. Um, it was just this morning, our staff and I were talking about um, one of our colleagues becoming ill when we were at a state conference. And, mm -hmm. and so it was, we just had to, we just had to change gears and do our thing. I think um, one of the things also, I'll tell you, and it's a secret only to the people who are on here, the people who watch later, you don't get the secret, is we're actually driving and we're going to have cars. Most of the people in Kansas, in fact, I bet all of them are driving and they're going to have a vehicle. If you need to go get that thing, um, they'll be able to if, if Lyft is not an option for you or if Uber is not an option. We're here to help and to make sure you just have a wonderful time and enjoy Kansas. Uh, as as I hope you can tell that we love the work we do and um, presenting is the way that our cups get filled up um, because we're not we're not there to put on a show. No. Um, we're there to share knowledge, but we're there to learn from all of you, um, those in our session and the people we talk to in the hallway. And so since Gail told one of the secrets, I'm going to tell our other one is Gail and I are both. Um, library consultants. We work for a regional library system, and we're not we're not talking hundred dollar an hour consultants here. We <laughs> earn a living wage just like you do. Um, oh come on, you can you say do. it. You can hope say it. Do. We're not smarty pants consultants, and we give it away for free. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but we do. So if you attend one of our sessions or have heard from someone about us, um, there's two white haired ladies going to be running through the hallway. <laughs> One of us um, would be happy to stop and talk with you and you can share your trustee problem or your bad employee problem or your, our city just took away $10,000 problem. Um, we can, we can, we can't necessarily solve your problem, but we can give you some tools to help it uh, navigate that world a little bit easier. And so um, we usually wear buttons that say, I'm a library consultant. How can we help? And so please feel free to reach out to us or anyone that you see um, from CKLS. The, um, we, all, we all got a brand new logo. It looks like this. Oh, you can't see it. Gail, show your, show your business card again. They're got a brand new the logo. End, there, there we go. Are. There we go. There's fancy new logo. Yes, and, this is my very fancy, fancy uh, business card holder. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's a professional. <laughs> um, but we want you to to feel safe and comfortable. And if something isn't, doesn't feel right and you need somebody to talk to, reach out to one of us. Um, we are we are helpers by our trade. And as Gail said, um, the care and freeding of libraries is what our library work is. So I just remembered one more thing. Um, even after the conference has started, there's often someone at registration table to help you and to help you find answers to questions you may have. That's another resource available to you. And the the Hyatt staff is amazing, mm -hmm. um, and so don't don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and oh, one more thing too. Um, um, see, we can do ahead. this all. Day. Go yeah. ahead. How much is usually is it for a meal in Wichita compared to where we're at now? I think that's important to talk about a little. Food is expensive everywhere now. I just made a quick road trip up to Michigan and back, and it's it's usually 20 bucks a person. Um, and in hotel, in conference hotel, the meals are just as expensive, if not more expensive. One of the tips I was going to say, if you're not an alcohol drinker, but you want to sit and visit with everybody, is um, I have, uh, in my pajamas, of course, because it's Gail, um, the bar staff makes awesome tea. They make herbal tea for me, or they'll make a fresh cup of decaf. Um, I've even had to make cups of hot cocoa. Um, yeah, you can hang out with your friends. There's lots of fun things to do. Or or um, non-alcoholic daiquiris and things. Yes, they're great. They'll, they'll take care of those things. And the Hyatt lobby is comfortable and nobody looks at you like if you're hanging out in your jammies. <laughs> 
Um, they might. So, yeah. I just don't care. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> that. Um, that. So, you know, it's it's not just because it's a high, it's not pretentious. They, yes. Um, yes. Um, this you are with library folk of of every kind and you'll see people of every kind. And um, but be yourself, be comfortable and and come to Kansas and have a wonderful time. Wonderful we are time. just we are just very excited. So um, I think we can wrap it up. But but please ask any questions you might have. And yes, we always wake up this pretty. No, that's not your question, I'm sure, but that's Gail okay. does. It takes a long time to get this pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're welcome, Lisa. I hope I see you and have a wonderful time. Thank you everyone for attending. Liz, if you will capture the chat for me, please. And I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you.